Hello friends, old and new. If you are new here, my name is Lisa. I do content on budget grocery shopping and cooking. It's my cat. As soon as I started talking to the camera, he went from sleeping in my room to climbing up to be on my shoulder. Some of my videos focus on non-traditional places to get groceries like the Dollar Tree. Some of my videos focus on smaller than average budgets. And then sometimes I just like to share with y'all what are just completely normal grocery shopping looks like. He's trying to climb up me again. For reference, my house is made up of three adults and we live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I filmed this video in April of 2024 and just did my grocery shopping at our normal local grocery stores. My one disclaimer is that this is just a snapshot of a single week of our eating and meals. So if it seems like we eat a lot of something this week or not a lot of something, that's not necessarily indicative of like what every single week of our eating looks like. I tend to shop what's on sale, what's in season. So my groceries are usually reflective of that. There are also certain things that I buy in bulk and so don't buy very often like rice and flour. So you may see me use those items in the video, but I'm not gonna necessarily purchase them on any given week. But I will say that our normal weekly budget, including those items, does average out to 40 to $60 a week. This week I spent $40 and it was also my boyfriend Andrew's birthday. So this is my Harris Teeter haul. I spent $23.74. I got these three packages of ground beef. They're each right around a pound. They were on sale for $1.99 a pound, $1.81, $2.03, and $1.89. These frozen chicken wings were 99 cents a pound. So I got uh, almost four pounds of those. I'm thinking for Andrew's actual birthday, we'll probably do Korean fried chicken wings maybe. I've never fried chicken wings, but I'm down to try. And then I got these two pork shoulders. It says the sale price is $1.29 a pound, but they actually, there's a, the way the Harris Cedar does their sales is there was like an extra sale. If you were an EVIC, activate your online account pretty much. So they were actually 99 cents a pound through the weekend. So these were actually $7.78 and $6.92 for this one. One of these I'll cook this week and then the other one I'll freeze. I was right near Dollar Tree. So I popped in there real quick. I spent $3.83. I grabbed a package of the seasoning blend that I really like and then two packages of these, you know, little drink mix things. We are primarily a water drinking household. We don't really do a lot of other types of drinks other than coffee anyway, but Andrew likes these. So I usually keep them in the house and they're definitely a pretty affordable drink option, especially when compared to like sodas and stuff like that. And then finally, I made a quick stop at Food Lion. I spent $11.27 there. Main reason for stopping is we needed coffee. You should have seen me standing in the coffee aisle at Harris Teeter. The mental gymnastics I was doing to myself, cause I was like, do I wanna spend a few more dollars on coffee here or make the stop at Food Lion to get the coffee that's on sale? Then after I'd already decided I was gonna go to Food Lion and get the coffee, I also decided I was gonna make chili tonight. So I had a couple other things I wanted to get anyway. We're not picky with coffee. We buy whatever's on sale. And so this week it was Maxwell House. That was $7.99. Also got a container of tomato sauce for the chili for $1.48, green onions for 69 cents, and then a big green pepper for 89 cents. We were gifted a bunch of produce last week and we still have a bunch of that left. That's why my shopping trip was not very produce heavy, but I'll probably make another trip in a few days to stock up on more produce. But for right now, we should have plenty. We do like beans in our chili. I like to do kidney beans and black beans. If I was using cans, I'd probably just do a can of each but I'm gonna do dried beans in my instant pot because that's the, to me that's the quickest and easiest way of making these beans. I like to do about three quarters of a cup of each. And then I do always rinse my beans and just kind of poke around and make sure that there are no rocks or other foreign debris that I don't want in my final dish. For water, I usually do around three cups per one cup of dried beans. So for a cup and a half beans, I'll do a little over a quart of water. And then these will cook on high pressure for 35 minutes. Alternatively, you can just hit the bean button twice, or at least for my Instant Pot you can, and it goes straight to that 35 minute timer. The rest of my chili just gets made on the stove. I used to do it in my Instant Pot but tomato-based recipes can be really tricky in the Instant Pot. It's really easy for them to burn on the bottom. And I found that it doesn't really save me that much time anyway. So these days I just prefer to do it on the stovetop. One of my viewers, Darcy, very, very, very generously sent me one of these. I've never actually used these. I always just use the 
a spatula or whatever. And, you know, it was one of those things that I was like, eh, it's just, you know, something that's gonna take up room that I don't really have in the kitchen, yada, yada, yada. But no, this is, this is very, very nice. I definitely uh, appreciate this. Since my meat is partially cooked here, we've got the, already got that process going. I'm gonna add a couple onions that I chopped up, diced up. And if I decide I need to get some of the grease from this ground beef out of here, cause it was like an 80, 20, I, I'll just get a paper towel and kind of like swish it around in there to soak up some of it. My ground beef and onions have been cooked together for a few minutes. I'm gonna add some garlic, some pepper, a good bit of chili powder. If you like to add cumin, definitely do. That's a, a comment I get a lot is that I should be adding cumin. We're not super duper crazy over it in our chili, so we skip it, but you definitely don't have to. Like, make it how you like it. This is that Cajun style seasoning I have. Mmm, that smells so good. I'm also gonna add some of this flavor up. Usually I would do Worcestershire, but I forgot that I finished it last night when I went shopping. I made these burritos last night, and they were so good. Basically, this is the, they, they advertise it as a cooking concentrate. This one is in a tomato base, so it should go really good in this. I'm adding my beans as well. I drink most of the cooking liquid. Also adding in that large bell pepper that I bought today, plus a jalapeno that was in our fridge. That was the tomato sauce I just added. For tomatoes, I'm doing one can of regular diced tomatoes and one can of the diced tomatoes with the green chilies. My pot's getting a little full here, but that is all the ingredients that we're gonna be adding. I gave it a taste. I think it does need a little more chili powder and I'm gonna do a little bit more garlic and a little bit more of the Cajun seasoning because why not, this is a big pot of food. It did taste really good already, as is though. It just a little bit under seasoned. And now I'm gonna put a lid on it and I'm gonna lower the heat so that way it's just simmering in here. And I'm gonna set a timer for 20 or 30 minutes. Usually that's plenty of time to let those flavors really melt together. And it's just gonna, as good as it tastes now, it's gonna taste even better when all those flavors just have time to like cook together. And then while that's cooking, I'll clean up my mess here, do some dishes so that way when dinner is done, there won't be that much cleanup to take care of after. I just popped the lid off my chili, turned the heat off, gave it a little stir, tasted it, burnt the heck out of my tongue. Now would be the time to adjust the spices if necessary, but I'm really happy with how this is tasting. I'm gonna get out some sour cream, cut up some green onion, and get a bowl. And cheese too. I forgot to mention cheese, but definitely love some cheese on my chili. We're not having this with like pasta or rice or anything tonight, but it's definitely something I might do over the next few days with some of the leftovers, just to get a little bit of a different flavor profile going on. By the way, uh, the bottoms of those green onions, I'll definitely be planting in my garden and I'll have to show y'all what the green onions in my garden look like right now. They're from last summer and they just absolutely have like gone crazy this spring. I'll, I'll, I'll put a clip in it right here. But anyway, this bowl is done and ready to eat. Like, look how crazy these are. Like, look at this thing. I had one of my neighbors ask me what kind of flowers I had growing and I was like, yeah, those are onions. Hey friends, I am making a meatloaf tonight and I'm going to make it with part ground beef and part lentils. Putting one cup aside for dinner tonight. The rest of the bag will go in here. This will go back on my shelf for the next time I need lentils and these I'm gonna rinse real quick. I've got a pot of water on the stove that's about to be boiling and I rinsed my lentils. Lentils come in different colors and the different colors take different amounts of time to cook. These ones, which are the ones I see most commonly in stores, only take around 20 minutes, give or take a few minutes. You don't need to worry about soaking lentils and they take much less time than beans. Fun lentil fact, they are not beans, they are legumes. Lentils are legumes, beans are legumes, but lentils are not beans. <laughs> yeah, I'll check back with y'all in about 20 minutes when these are done. 
There's my lentils after 20 minutes plus a couple extra minutes with the heat off just sitting on the stove while I got other stuff together. I've got my oven for heat at the 375. I'm using one of those packages of hamburger. The other one I'm going to get in the freezer tonight. So it's just under a pound of ground meat. And then my lentils. I did rinse them in cold water just so that way they're not super hot when I mix this. Two eggs. Full disclosure, I thought I could crack two eggs at the same time there and I was not graceful with it. So no shells got in there, so that's what really counts. Hopefully this bowl is big enough. I don't usually make my meatloaf with the lentils, but it's been something I've been wanting to try out since I did it for a Dollar Tree video before with sausage. And it was really, really good that way. By the way, so I just use this box of stuffing mix and what I'm gonna do as soon as I put this meatloaf in the oven, is go into my phone. It's just under a little under half a cup of ketchup, but I'm gonna go into my phone and add it to my list. I have in my notes section, one cup of water, uh, sections for Aldi, Harris Teeter, Food Lion, and Walmart, even though I don't do Walmart very often, and then like the Asian grocery store. And as I realize I need things, I add them to the list. When I buy them, I check them off, and that's how I kind of keep on top of different groceries i had to make sure i remember so my mistake the other day was not adding worcestershire sauce to the list when i used it up but it is on there now so that's a little bit of this like super spicy hot sauce that i have really i've only been using this for meatloaf so it's in my fridge forever so it really needs to be used up a little splash of soy sauce to make up for the lack of worcestershire sauce and then the stuffing mix has a good bit of seasoning on its own, but I like my meatloaf to really have a lot of flavor. So I'm gonna add a bunch of extra seasoning, garlic, pepper, some Italian seasoning, and then this is some Slap Your Mama Cajun seasoning. Unlike the Badia one that you'll see me use a lot, this one actually has like a good kick to it. I really like it when my meatloaf is a little on the spicy side. So I'm going to mix this real quick. I'll be right back. Here's what that looks like mixed all together. I feel like it's a little bit more moist than my normal meatloaf mix. So we'll see how it cooks up and I can just make a note to myself that next time I may want to drop the water down to three quarters of a cup or do a more thorough job of draining the lentils. I just realized I did not turn my light on. There we go. Light. <laughs> And then I'm just going to shape this into a big loaf. Do a little spritz with oil just in case. You could definitely use a loaf pan. I just kind of do a more organic shape. Just wash my hands and get that signature squirt of meat, uh, ketchup on top, right? Usually I cook this at 375 for about 35 minutes. I'm thinking that that cook time is still going to work. I'll let you know if I do different though. I went ahead and freezer bagged my ground beef. And look, I'm even doing better this year. I've been labeling things with what they are in the dates. Based on the general plan I have, this won't be eaten this week, but it'll be in the freezer for when I need it. By the way, we can add $1.25 to my grocery total for the week so far. This is on half a pound of bacon. Uh, it looks like this because I already put it in the freezer. I put it in the freezer as soon as I got home. I was at this hot yoga class and it was so hot today, like so much more hot than it normally is. So after that class, before I drove home, I needed to just walk around the grocery store for a little bit in the air conditioning. And since this was $1.25, I thought it was a good buy. So it's in my freezer for when I need it. So I mentioned that we got a bunch of produce and a couple other things from my mom's friend. She herself got it from another relative who was given it. It was very much passing the love around, but we got all of these sweet potatoes plus a bunch more. So I'm just gonna make a real quick mashed sweet potato. I don't usually worry about peeling my potatoes. I think these potatoes were a little bit older. So even after washing them well, there were some spots on the skin that, I mean, the potatoes are fine, but in this particular instance, I thought it was better to peel those pieces off. So I'm just gonna chop these up real quick. 
And because I'm just mashing them, my cuts don't have to be pretty or super consistent. And I'm just popping these into my pressure cooker that I've got just off to the side here. All I'm doing for these is adding one cup of water, putting my lid on, and cooking for five minutes. My meatloaf is out of the oven, and I will show you that in just a minute. This is my sweet potatoes, cooked and drained. It's just under a couple tablespoons of butter. Some salt. A little pepper. I'll mash these up real quick to give that butter a minute to melt in the new stick of butter out of the fridge. But that's really all it takes for mashed sweet potatoes. They're very, very simple. And then here's my meatloaf. I did uh, let it cook for 40 minutes instead of 35, just let it get a little bit browner on the outside. I did stick a thermometer in. I know it is fully cooked. So I'm just about ready to be eaten. I decided at the absolute final moment, literally as I was plating this up, that I wanted some peas or I wanted I wanted another another veggie side and so I just warmed up a can of peas real quick. I feel like green beans would be a nice side to this but I'm picky about how I like canned green beans so I wouldn't have had time to make them in a way that I like. Mashed sweet potatoes so simple but so good and my meatloaf smelled really good as it was cooking and the meatloaf tastes fantastic. It has the slightest difference in texture from the lentils but I wouldn't say that the lentils are particularly obvious. Maybe it's that it has a slight like creaminess on the inside. I wouldn't use creamy to describe the texture of this meatloaf, but like compared to an all meat, no lentil one. Either way, it is really good. Tonight is gonna be an eating up leftovers and random odds and ends that were in the fridge that need to get used up night. There's still a couple slices of meatloaf and some mashed sweet potatoes. The bread and the salad are both from that batch of food that was passed on to us, which means it's been in our house for like almost a week now and needs to get used up. This hummus has been in my fridge for a while, so I'm pulling that out just kind of as a, hey, use this up. And then I, I was gonna say, I didn't know how we still have so much chili, but then I remembered that we made some rice. And so Andrew and I for lunch had rice and chili, so we only, it obviously didn't use as much chili as we otherwise would have, but it's very, very delicious. So would not want it to go to waste. Another option could technically be to freeze some of it for an easy meal later on, but this way I get to have an easy meal tonight. <laughs> I'm having a slice of that bread with some hummus on it while I wait for my chili to heat up. <laughs> hey friends, I'm finally getting my life together and doing something productive here this evening. I swear I did not accomplish half of what I wanted to this afternoon. I did get some sunflower seeds in the ground though, so there is that. But, so I have one cup and two tablespoons of warm water here. It's about 110 degrees. A half tablespoon of active dry yeast. And then I'm also adding a tablespoon of sugar to this. So this is a recipe that I have like successfully made loaf bread with and I wanted to see how it would work making a roll because the inside of the, the loaf is like a nice soft loaf. So I think it might work nice. Stir all this together and then give that yeast a few minutes to activate. I'm going through some old yeast packets that I found in the back of my cabinet. And by old, I mean like the best by date was like two, three years ago. So I think they're still gonna work fine. If not, I'll have to redo this and pull yeast out of my freezer. I'm gonna be making this hunk of pork in the Instant Pot. It is my favorite way to cook a pork shoulder. It's super easy and it turns out perfect every single time. So obviously first thing is to get this thing out of the plastic. This pork shoulder right here is just over seven pounds. I'm going to cut it up into one to two pound pieces. There is a bone in here, so you just have to be mindful of the bone, but otherwise it is not overly comp complicated. They don't have to be perfect, even sized pieces for this to work. So I'll cut this in half. So I've got these two chunks here. It's not a super big bone. It's just a weird shape. So just be mindful of your knife. There we go. And then this really big chunk here is where the bone is. It runs straight along there. I'm not gonna try to cut this any smaller. The bone is always my biggest piece. I've had my cast iron heating up with some oil and it is nice and hot. So I'm very quickly gonna get a little bit of seasoning. 
on these so that way I can get it in the pan. Some salt, pepper, garlic. Make sure to see from the other side too. I'm gonna let these brown for a couple minutes and then flip them over. I'm just rotating these around and as soon as they've all got some nice color, I'm just dropping them into my Instant Pie insert. All the pieces of the pork are now in the Instant Pie. I turned the heat off a couple minutes ago so my pan could start cooling down a little bit. And then the pressure cooker needs water to create steam to come to pressure. It needs about a cup. There's a lot of good bits in here from searing that pork. So I have heated up water here that I'm gonna use to deglaze the pan. I just mentioned that it's warm water because I don't like to shock my cast iron with, you know, like, like a cup of real cold water with nothing else in the pan. But I'm just scraping all those good bits off the bottom, getting all this mixed together, and then I will grab my oven mitts and dump this into the Instant Pot, and that will be the cooking liquid. All right, I got that cooking liquid in there. That will be enough for this to come to pressure. I'm gonna cook this for 75 minutes. I've gotten away with cooking it at like 65, but personally, I don't think it gets nearly as tender. For me, 75 minutes is the sweet spot. Right here, I have about two and a half, probably closer to two and three quarters cups of water. Adding about a teaspoon of salt. I never actually use a teaspoon for my salt. And a tablespoon of oil, because I will add way too much oil if I eyeball it. This recipe uses anywhere from two and a half to three cups of flour. I stick a little bit on the lower side, especially because I tend to be a little heavy handed with flour sometimes. That yeast definitely, definitely works. Mix those other ingredients in real quick and then get that right in there with it. Initially, I'm using a spatula to mix it. And then once I got a rough ball, I will switch to kneading by hand. This is one of the kind of more labor intensive bread doughs that I do. It should still only be like, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes of pretty easy kneading. You could also easily do this in a mixer with a dough hook. It is about time for me to switch to my counter. It's a very uh, straightforward process here. If the dough is sticking, get just a little bit of flour on it. It's okay for the dough to be a little bit tacky, but you don't want it to be actively pulling, pulling apart to the counter like that. I am pretty happy with my dough. I could probably knead it for a couple minutes longer, but honestly, I think it is good enough as is. I did have to use like a little over three cups of flour. It's just so humid in my house right now, outside. And like, I feel like even now, I feel like the dough's trying to pick up moisture from the air and wants to stick to my counter again. So I'm gonna stick it in a greased bowl and cover it and let it rise for like an hour. This dough has been rising for about an hour. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that has gotten nice and puffy. Get some flour on my hands. So normally I would be immediately shaping this and I'd just be shaping this into one big lump of dough or a uh, loaf of dough. So it'd be pretty quick, you know, pretty easy because it's almost in that shape here already. But I want to make rolls, so at least I'm gonna try to make rolls. I wonder how many is a good number, eight? Will that be enough? I'm gonna try eight and I'm either gonna end up with nice big rolls, maybe oversized rolls, I don't know. I mean, I'd be happy with slider sized. Definitely a little bit of a size difference here, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to shape these individually into little roll shapes just by kind of pulling the sides down and in. They might not be super pretty on the bottom, but who really inspects the bottom of a, of a bun? And then I'm just placing them on this sheet pan where they're going to go through a second hour long rise. Maybe not an hour, maybe more like 45 minutes. There's what my buns look like. I'm gonna cover them back up and set a timer for 45 minutes and let them puff back up. For a side, I'm just doing a very simple tray of roasted potatoes and carrots. I've got my oven preheated to 425. And I'll chop these up real quick. I am not good at potato math because I'm realizing that once I cut these up, it is a lot more than I thought it was at first. I have to get the potatoes 
ready for the pan, all I'm going to do is get a little bit of oil in there, some salt, pepper, and really whatever seasonings you want. I do not season my potatoes the same every single time I make them. So do what sounds good. Once they're covered in oil and spices, I'm going to lay these on the pan. And then I will cut up my carrots. Probably won't do all of these carrots. So I'll start chopping them up and see how many I want to do. How many I think will fit on the pan. Either way, uh, I am adding carrots to my list for next time I go shopping because these are all the carrots that I have left. They are pretty consistently 65 cents a pound, which is why carrots stay a staple in my kitchen and I love them. I wouldn't touch carrots as a kid. I love carrots so much now. And then I'm doing the exact same thing with the carrots, a little bit of oil, and then for the carrots, I'll go just a little bit more simplistic and just do salt and pepper on them. Here's what all that looks like on the pan. I'm going to get these in the oven and set a timer for 20 minutes, at which point I'm going to take them out, give them a little shake around because the bottom should be browning up, and I'll put them in for another 10 minutes. My pork shoulder is done cooking. I let it natural release for 20 minutes before I release the rest of the pressure. Usually I will just let it natural release the whole way, but I didn't want to wait longer. So I like to pull it out in big chunks, but you can see that it immediately just like falls apart shreds. It's just easier to get it out of the cooking pot if I try to take it out as big chunks. Here's what those carrots and potatoes look like. I've tasted them. They're absolutely delicious. If you want a little more variety, you could do something like a Brussels sprout or even something with a shorter cook time that you just add halfway. These are just for 45 minutes. Let's see what they look like. They definitely puffed up a bit. I have my oven at 375 right now. I'm not quite sure how long these are going to take to bake. I'm going to start them at 15 minutes and see what they look like. Here's what those buns look like. I'm hoping that they're gonna taste as good as they look and smell. Mm, look at this bun. The reason why I thought that this particular bread recipe would make a good bun is because the bread was always so soft on the inside. And this little bit of browning is without any kind of egg, egg wash or anything. If you want it, like a richer browning on your buns, all you have to do is give it an egg wash. Pork is just mixed with a little bit of sweet baby rays. I was thinking what I really would have loved on this, like what would have been really good is a little bit of Andrew's um, cabbage slaw that he makes. A little bit of hot sauce too. Yeah, I'm ready to eat. It's a little bit different than a bun recipe that uses milk in the dough, but this is very good. If anything, I think just buttering the top of the bun a little bit. Mm -mm. I made Korean fried chicken for Andrew's birthday dinner, voiceover because we were hanging out listening to music while I cooked, and I realized I didn't record as much of the process as I thought I did anyway. I've made this recipe many times, but this was my first time frying chicken wings. I've always done cut up boneless thighs in the past, and I'll be the first to admit I should have separated the flats and drums from the start, especially because I wasn't using a super deep pan for frying. If I had a deep fryer or a pot, it would have been a different story. So yeah, I fried a few of the wings whole and then cut them apart and it was much, much, much easier. I'm telling y'all, I was so stressed out at first though, I thought I was ruining Andrew's birthday dinner but it did end up working out in the end and they ultimately fried up beautifully. They were fully cooked and super crispy. Luckily, the sauce came together quickly and perfectly. I'm gonna put a link to this recipe down in the description. And then for sides, we just did a simple white rice and some steamed broccoli. Tonight, I'm gonna make a pretty quick dinner, at least uh, quick in terms of the amount of hands-on work I have to do. So that's some chicken bouillon. I'm adding to some rinsed rice, some Cajun seasoning, pepper, some garlic powder. Actually, that was onion powder. <laughs> That's the garlic powder. And then I'll just mix this up, add a cup of water, pop it in the rice cooker. So I'm basically just gonna do some bowls with sweet potato, black bean, rice, and pork. I'll cube up these sweet potatoes real quick, toss them in some oil, salt and pepper, and then roast them in the oven for 20, 25 minutes. Give them a little toss on the pan and then put them in for another 10 or 15 minutes or so. 
made this meal a week, week and a half ago for a $5 dinner and it was so good. I've been itching to have it again, but this time we'll have it with a little bit of pork on top. I'm realizing that was probably a lot of sweet potato, probably twice as much as we actually need, but that's okay because then we have an easy lunch already practically put together for tomorrow. I'm just doing some salt and pepper and I'll lay these out on the pan and get them in the oven. My rice is done and ready. And while my sweet potatoes finish up, I'm gonna get my pork ready. I'm gonna be cooking it under the broiler so it gets nice and crispy and delicious. It's funny, I don't think my mom cares what kind of pork like meal I make as long as the pork is prepared this way because it is just so good. Basically, I'm just separating it onto the pan. And then before I put this in the oven, all I'm gonna do is season it, salt and pepper, garlic, and some of this Cajun seasoning that I really like, but really you could do whatever you want. And then I'll just pop this under the broiler for a few minutes. Always recommend when you have something under the broiler, pay close, close attention. There's my sweet potatoes. I just brushed them all to the side of the pan. My pork right out of the oven, still sizzling. I did take it out a couple times and just give the, the pan a shake. That just helps it crisp up nicer. And then nice flavorful seasoned rice and my seasoned black beans, which are just straight from the can. I didn't do any of the work there other than putting them in a the microwave. And then there's what that final plate looks like. I just put a little bit of sour cream on it as well. An avocado would also go great with this. This was a really easy, super delicious meal to put together. Hey friends, I wanna use up some more of that shredded pork that we still have for dinner tonight. So I have some oil heating up in a cast iron pan. I'm gonna chop these two onions up and get them frying up in that pan. I wanna do a shepherd's pie style dish, but with pork. While my onions cooked, I chopped up a bunch of that pork that was left and worked on getting most of what the rest of the ingredients are gonna be together. I think I'm actually fine to go ahead and get this in with the onions. And I'll let that cook together and heat up for a little bit. These are the veggies I'm gonna use as part of the filling. I get these from Aldi. Since I'm using this one, I'm just going to add this to my list of things that I need to buy from Aldi probably tomorrow. And because this is in a steam bag, I am going to toss it in the microwave for a few minutes so that I don't have to add it to the pan cold. For potatoes, I'm going with instant because we have gone through our potatoes faster than this week than I anticipated. And I think this is a good opportunity to use some of these ones. I bought these a few weeks ago at the beach. I had lofty ambitions that I was gonna make vacation pierogi that did not pan out. So I have these instant mashed potatoes that I need to use up. So I think they'll be good with this meal because of the different flavors and the gravy. And honestly, like if you make instant mashed potatoes right, they're really good. This is the cooking liquid from when I made the pork. I'll be using that. I'm gonna use this packet of gravy mix that I want out of my cabinet. I did this recently on my cabbage video. I used some of the cooking liquid from when I made corned beef and cabbage and mixed it with one of these gravy packets and it made like the best gravy. Oh my gosh. Give that pork a few minutes to cook with the onion. I'm gonna add, woo, I'm gonna add this gelatinous broth here. We'll see in just a minute, it will be fully liquefied and this stuff is so good. I'm adding the veggies in now as well. Hoping that this pot, this pan here, will uh, be big enough. Mistakes may have been made in choosing the size that I did. We'll see. Also adding a bit of this uh, garlic and herb cooking concentrate. All right here's my water and butter that I heated up to a boil. Some milk. Potato flakes. More potato flakes. I'm just following the directions on the box for now, but I will be adding a bunch of seasoning to these to give them a lot more flavor. All right, I'm just gonna let these hydrate for a second. This is that gravy flavor packet, not flavor packet, but that gravy packet. The way this stuff works is you're supposed to mix it into a cup of cold water and bring that to a boil. What I'm going to do that I have done before and it worked well 
was I'm just gonna mix it in a little bit of cold water. Oh, it'll need to be a little bit more cold water than that. Pretty much the minimum amount of cold water that I can get away with it and have it be fully mixed. And then I'm gonna pour that into my hot pan and it's pretty much gonna act like cornstarch, like adding a cornstarch slurry and it's going to thicken the whole thing up. That was my uh, oven preheating. I set it to 400. All right, good enough for me. I'm gonna add this in. Just before I add that, I'm gonna add some pepper and a little garlic powder. And let's do a little bit of this badia complete as well. This gravy mix plus the cooking concentrate are pretty salty, so I am not adding any salt to this. And I will just give this a couple minutes to thicken up. I had the heat turned off the stove. I'm just letting that continue to kind of simmer on the residual heat. I'm gonna season up these very bland potatoes here a little bit. Just salt, onion powder, garlic powder, pepper, some Italian seasoning. I also suddenly remembered I have just a little bit of green onion left. That would be great to get used up. And then I'm gonna be adding cheese on top, but I'm also gonna add a little bit directly to the potatoes here because I can, why not? And then this little nub that's left here, I'm going to put in a little thing of water on the windowsill and let, the, let some fresh new roots grow out. And then I'll plant some in my garden bed and presumably a year from now, they'll look like the ones that I showed you from my garden earlier this week. Mm. I just tasted this and it is so unbelievably flavorful. Let's see if I can get these mashed potatoes on without making a big mess. <laughs> I was thinking this is a ton of mashed potatoes, but now I'm wondering if that's really the case. There we go. That is good enough for me and it is such a full pan. All that's left is to sprinkle some cheese on top. I might need to get a little bit more cheese from another bag. Hold on. I don't want to overload it too much with cheese. I mean, I could, I love cheese, but I think that's good. I'm gonna pop this in the oven for, oh, like 20 minutes. Really, it's just letting all those flavors get hot and melt together and let that cheese get all melty and delicious on top. All right, y'all, this looks amazing, but between you and me, I'm a little bit intimidated about getting it out of the oven. I, uh, I turned the oven off and I've just been letting it sit for a couple minutes with the oven door open because it's bubbling because it's so to the brim. There we go. Ah, beautiful. I'm gonna let this sit and cool for like five minutes. Let it, give it a chance to stop bu bubbling, but I'm excited to dig into this. This is still absolutely scalding hot, but I am impatient and hungry. So it's definitely a good bit thinner than a traditional shepherd's pie, or rather it's kind of gravy heavy but I'm okay with it because it tastes so good. And that's okay with me because I would rather have a dish that's a little on the, the gravy heavy side than like, I've had some shepherd's pies that were a little kind of on the dry side or weren't really flavorful enough. And I mean, this this is so good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you could argue that it's, it's more, of a, <laughs> more of a shepherd's pie inspired stew or something. I don't know. All I know is that it's delicious. <laughs> so that's what our meals looked like this week. Don't mind this, I'm just, I started dinner at steam, it's not smoke. I did wanna mention real quick though, that I don't do these videos as an exact blueprint for anyone to follow for their own groceries. I know that grocery prices tend to vary sometimes a lot by region. I know I have viewers from all over the US, all over the world. My viewers have a very diverse range of dietary preferences and needs, allergies, all kinds of things like that. What I do hope that y'all get out of these videos is ideas or inspiration, anything that can help you out with your own meal planning or grocery shopping. That being said, thank y'all for watching and I will see you again soon.